Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to explore an interesting JavaScript code snippet that allows us to capture screenshots right from within a web page. It's a fantastic feature and I'm excited to show you how it works. Before that, let us see the project demo. With this app, you can capture screenshots and download them. Here is an example of such a screenshot. Now let's learn how to create the app. We have an HTML structure here with a class called wrapper. Inside the wrapper, we have a container with an ID of container. This is where our demo content will go. We have a H1 tag that displays the text demo content. Next, we have lorem ipsum text inside the paragraph tag. Lorem ipsum text is just a placeholder text often used in design and development process. Now here comes the interesting part. We have an image tag with the attribute source set to demo ima image dot jpg. This means that there should be an image file named demo image dot jpg in the same directory as the html file. The image will be displayed on the web page. Moving on, we have another div with id preview container. This is an empty container that we'll use later to display a preview of captured screenshot. Finally, we have a section of buttons. It contains uh, two buttons, one for capturing the screenshot and another is an anchor tag, which would be later styled as a button. This would be used to download the screenshots. We also add class hide to the anchor tag. You can see these buttons below. Now let us add some styling to this uh, HTML structure. First we have a block of code that sets some basic styles for all the elements on the page. It sets the margins and paddings to zero, uses border box box sizing model and applies the poppins font or sans serif font as a fallback. Next, moving to the body element, we have a blue background and a padding of 1 em. Now let's talk about image inside the wrapper class. We want to make sure that the image doesn't exceed the original size. So we set the max width property to 100%. Now. We move to the wrapper class. This is where we define the layout of our page using CSS grid. We divide the wrapper into two columns with equal width using grid template columns property. The one FR unit means that each column will take an equal fraction of available space. We also set a gap of 1 EM between the columns. Moving on to the container and preview container IDs, which represent the two sections of a page, we set a border radius of 0.8 EM to give them rounded corners. We have some padding inside and background color is set to white, creating a nice contrast with the blue background. The paragraph inside the container has some specific styles as well. We set the font size to 0.8 EM. which is slightly smaller than the default size. The color to a light gray to provide subtle contrast with black text. Next, we have buttons class, which contains the styling for our buttons. We use flex box to center the buttons horizontally, which justify content center. Now, once the buttons are centered horizontally, we add a gap of 1 EM between them. We also set margin top of 1 EM to create some spacing between the buttons and the container. The button and anchor elements share similar styles. We set the font size to 1 EM, which is default size. The background color is white and we remove the border and outline using border none and outline none. The padding adds some space inside the buttons. The cursor property changes the cursor to pointer when hovering over the buttons. We set black as a text color and finally add poppins as the font family for button and the anchor tag. We go back to our HTML file 
and add the script file. To link the external script file, we use script tag, which source set to the external script file. We create the external script file. Once the file is created, we start implementing the logic using JavaScript. First, we have a few variables defined. Container, capture button, preview container and download button. These variables are used to store references to the HTML elements on our page that we will be interacting with. Next, we add an event listener to the capture button element. When the button is clicked, it triggers an asynchronous function. Now, within this function, we first remove the hide class from the download button, making it visible. So we haven't defined the hide class yet. The hide class simply sets the display to none. Then we use the HTML to canvas function which we imported from the library that we are going to include right now. For that, go to HTML to canvas.cdn, click on the first link, copy the script tag and place it in the head section of your HTML document. Let's go back to our JavaScript file. Now, this function takes the container element as an argument and captures a screenshot of its contents. We use the await keyword to wait for the screenshot to be captured before proceeding. The result is stored in the canvas variable. Next, we convert the canvas to data URL using to data URL method. This data URL represents the captured screenshot as an image. We assign the URL to the image URL variable. We update the preview container by setting its inner HTML to include an image tag with a source attribute set to the image URL. This displays the captured screenshot in the preview container. Now before we move further, let us see the working demo of the screenshot being captured. And here we go. Now we have to implement the functionality for download screenshot. We update the download button by setting its href attribute to image URL and its download attribute to image.png. This allows user to download the captured screenshot by clicking the button. Additionally, in the window on load event handler, which fires when the page finishes loading, we add the hide class back to the download button to hide it initially. We clear the inner HTML of preview container. And there you have it. With this code, you can create a screenshot capture tool on your web page. It's a great way to allow users to capture and download images of specific content. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in comments below. 
Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more coding tutorials like this. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Before leaving, just a small note. Set the text decoration of the anchor tag to none to remove the underline. And that's it. Your project is now ready.